I ran. Got on the elevator, went up to his room, and he was dead. And I had never had a panic attack in my life. I had one day. My throat closed up, I couldn't breathe. It just feels like your world crumbles. When my grandfather passed, that was something I'll never get over. My name is Ron Osi. Name in a restaurant was Tip of the Boot. It was obviously named that because my mother's side of my family is from Sicily and that's the little island that looks like the boot was kicking it. April 15th of 1998 is when we opened and the restaurant closed. It was April of 2005. It kind of fell into my lap. So at the time I was doing like corporate food service. I wasn't really sure where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do and it became available and my grandfather was still alive at that point and that was a chef that I learned from. So he kind of pushed me in that direction to open it up. So that's what we did. When I opened up the doors, I didn't want my family there. I hired a lot of local high school kids. There was nothing more difficult than working with your family. My grandfather and me had had a little bit of a falling out. We had some words. So he stopped coming around to the restaurant. And that's about when, you know, the sales started to take a little bit of his nose dive because I was doing things not the way I was taught to do them by him when I was younger. So I don't remember how we reconciled everything. I don't know if I called him up or I went to his apartment or what the deal was, but the next day he was back at the restaurant and he walked in and I still had all the like kids working for me and whatever. And he saw what I was doing and he saw some of the, the shortcuts I was taking. Walked in, looked around, didn't say a word. And he walks up to me in the kitchen and he's like, why are you working like an asshole? Exactly what he said. And I didn't say anything because I knew exactly what he meant. And that day, I gathered up everybody that worked there. I said, you, 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 you. I got to let you go. You're fired. That was it. Fired everybody on the spot. Called my mother up. I said, you want to do the desserts? Let's do it. Called Aunt Robin. You want to wait the tables? You know, my wife was already waiting tables on Friday, Saturday nights. My best friend Gil was my sous chef. And when I brought my family in and people saw that it was a family run operation, that's when it took off. There's no business that's perfect. Back then I was a screamer, I was a yeller, I'd throw stuff, kick stuff. It wasn't the healthiest of ways to respond to things, but my grandfather was like that. So when you, when you work in the business as long as I did with him and as, as young as I started with him, you live what you learn. You know, that's the way I was trained. You know, that's the way I saw, I, I held him in a very high regard. So I wanted to emulate the way he was. Now he was a big guy and he talked like the Godfather. Um, he had shattered his ankle when he was a Marine. So he had a very distinctive limp, you know, but it never stopped him. The kid, he could, I put him next to anybody. The night before we opened up, I worked a solid like 20 hours. He was next to me the whole time never took a break. He was a bull. He wore a bull around his neck, a little um, chain, you know, bull, bull, bull. He was a bull. But it was not easy working with him, but I, I can't imagine doing things any other way other than having had the opportunity to work with my, I don't want to say favorite grandparent. You, everybody has that one grandparent that they just kind of click with a little more than maybe the other grandparent. Me and my grandfather were just kindred spirits in a way. Yeah, it, it was very difficult to be his grandson sometimes, but I wouldn't change it for anything. I think about him every day. It's not a day it goes by that I don't think about him. When he passed in January of 99, at that point I was in business nine months, I think it was. We had gotten into another little tiff. We weren't speaking. Did I make amends in here? Yeah. So I know he's with me, and I know that he forgives me, and you know I know he's proud of me for everything that I've, I've done up to this point, my family, and my career, and the time I had in the restaurant. I, and I know it's okay. So did, you know, did it change things with the restaurant? It made me more focused to make it to, to make his legacy live on. You know, because there were people that came to the restaurant that knew him from his first restaurant that he opened up. In, in Wayne, New Jersey in 1956, they, they were his customers. 
was he a local celebrity? Celebrity chef, quotations? Yeah. So it, it really meant a lot to me to keep his name known. Every time I walked in the door, I made a point that I was going to make him proud from that point on. That was my job. I decided I wasn't going to work like an asshole. I was going to do, the, do things the way I was taught to his level of quality. So that's when I really started to buy the best ingredients, make sure every dish that went out was perfect, you know, make sure that everything that everybody else was doing was exactly how I did it. So it, it kind of, yeah, it gave me the, the kick in the ass I needed, unfortunately, him dying to uh, make me do things the right way again and really focus on the business.